name Bags of Flavor derived from me living in New York in the early 90s. Uh, I was lost, listening to a lot of hip hop and Craig Mack had a tune out called Flavor in Your Ear. So basically, this was in my brain a lot and lying in bed one night and I just thought, Bags of Flavor, that's perfect. That kind of describes what my bags are. The spelling of flavor is like the American spelling, so it's F-L-A-V-O-R, so there's no U in it. And it's just a bit of a homage to me coming up with the idea of the name in America when I lived there. If I look at the coat, I can already see the bag. So it's like that's what gives me inspiration. It can be anything. I mean, I've made bags out of towels. I like chopping up old North Face coats. I like chopping up old Stone Island jackets that are damaged because I can make beautiful Stone Island bags and they don't really make bags like I make them. So I like to make custom bags because everyone I make's unique and it's a one-off. And I've been making bags since 91 and I'm still not bored of making them because everyone's different. And it's like, I still get excited when I'm cutting it out to see how it's going to turn out. I knew I didn't want to sell suits for a living because obviously I've, I've, I've seen them, the fussy people that my dad used to sell suits to and to be honest with you, they just weren't for me. I suppose my, my passion for being a creative just comes from, I don't know, it's hard to, hard to describe but because I'm, I'm quite dyslexic, I just enjoy making stuff. I mean, I wasn't academic at school and they pretty much wrote me off but they, you know, they didn't know about dyslexia in the 80s. For me, I like vintage clothing because it's from an era when it, all of it was very expensive. They used the best fabrics they could at the time and the quality is standing the test of time. I mean, things that I sell are 25, 30 years old. They're like brand new and they're gonna last for a long time. You know, we were we were like the one-upmanship era where you, you, you know, you'd find a coat that had been and gone that no one was wearing so you could walk around in it and no one would have that coat. I mean, I traded coat after coat after coat, and I'd always be upgraded and getting a better coat, because, you know, I'm not daft. Uh, but then you'd get a coat and you'd be like, oh, I need a new set of BMX wheels. Do you want to trade them BMX wheels for this coat? And you'd be like, yeah, because I love that coat. And it's like, so you get a pair of wheels, and then you get bored of them, and you trade them wheels for a coat, and then you get that coat back. So to be honest with you, I've had coats that I had in when I was 12, and I've been lucky enough to find them coats like 25 years later and I've gone, oh my God, I had this. I wonder what I did with it. Oh, I know what I did with it. I probably traded it for something. So for me, it's kind of like, it's nice when you get things back. And it's just, it's a, it's a funny thing, but ask anyone my age, we all used to trade. We're all like swap shop generation where there was no vo money involved. I'll always rather trade because it's just, it's just, it's a nicer thing. You know, there's nothing wrong with the barter system. It doesn't have to all be about money. You know, it started off, trading chickens for goats. It's just like goats for goats. You know, money gets involved and normally it ruins everything. So I've got quite an open mind about that and a lot of the time I'd rather trade. It's just more fun.